first story. Narcissistic parents kicked their daughter out and tried to end her for coming out as a lesbian. So she went nuclear, ruined their lives, and sent them to jail never to be returned. About three years ago, I was in a multi-school academic support network that had a summer camp. At this camp, I met Kay. Kay was a closeted lesbian and was very scared of us telling her parents due to their extreme political and narcissistic views. I had dealt with this situation a few times, but not on this extreme level. Her parents were so far off the end of the scale that I dared not say anything about politics or religion in fear of starting an inquisition. These people made Westboro look like moderates. To give an example, they had complete control over her phone, emails, mail, and pretty much every other route of communication. So when they decided one of her friends was too Jewish, his last name sounded Jewish to them, they deleted him from her life. They called the program and rearranged her schedule so she would never see him again. Later, we found out they filed false, anonymous complaints against him so he wouldn't be invited back. Overnight, they removed him from her life, and this was not the last kid they did this with. Kay was terrified of her parents, but they owned her. There was no way to escape the shock of suddenly becoming an adult. I was seriously worried about her, to the point where I bought her an emergency-only prepaid phone, which I told her to hide. This was, unequivocally, the best decision I've ever made. Fast forward to January. Kay is struggling with the stress of everything, and says something innocuous in group chat along the lines of, good thing I don't have to worry about boys. We suddenly stopped hearing responses from her. Her cell phone goes offline. The house phone kicks all of our numbers, but not pay phones or other lines. The parents pick up, but say that there's no one with that name at this address, then hang up. Her classmate says she didn't show up for class that day. Alarm bells are going off for everyone. And then I get the call from Kay. Please, come pick me up. I was kicked out. It's cold. I'm the closest, and I had a car, and I was driving and blowing, heavy snow in far below freezing weather. I won't say that rage and panic fueled me, but I will say they got me there in one piece. I have never, ever driven a car as recklessly, as hard, or as fast as I did that day. When I got there, she was huddled under a tarp, barefoot, and in pajamas, at the foot of her house's stairs. The parents saw my car and rushed out to scream at me for taking their child from the path of God and corrupting her with devil-worshipping ideas or something like that. I told them that if she listened to me, it would be the first time she had ever done that. And then the critical sentence direct quote for once. She's not our child anymore. You godless heathen ruined her mind. And then, she's no daughter of ours. Now, I'm going to pause this for a moment to preface everything that happens from this point on. This is not a pro-atheist or anti-Christian post. These whack jobs are the furthest thing from humans I've ever seen. Do not use them as a generalization for religious group or a bandwagon to sell your ideals. I'm not dealing with that SHT here. K, freezing and scared, hides in my car. The parents start to get aggressive and hostile towards me, so I make two things very clear to them. I am recording everything they say. I have a camera on my car and my phone, and I have a police officer waiting for me at the foot of the driveway. I called the cops before I arrived due to not feeling safe. I am leaving, and never coming back, as per their request. Kay will be coming with me since she is not their daughter, per their screaming rant. They start arguing with AK as screaming over me about how she can be cured by methods that range from dubious to straight-up illegal. By this point, I'm done. I get back in my car while they're screaming at me and head back down the driveway. The cop and I have a short chat, and he recommends we be brought to the police station ASAP to prevent the parents from saying I kidnapped her. After a six-hour ER visit for her hypothermia and minor frostbite, escorted by police, we arrive. All of my video and audio recordings are entered into official records, and the officer's dashcam footage and Kay's ER report are filed away. I didn't know it at the time, but all of that would prove to be essential in court later. I sign her into a hotel in my town and lawyer up. The lawyer I know specifically deals with cases like hers for free. He is very, very good at it. There was a lot of legalese, a long process, and a lot of angry exchanges that I really didn't understand or participate in, but two years later, she was emancipated. I got to be a witness, and that recording and the ER report cinched the case, proving neglect. The parents didn't even try to argue against it, instead using some weird religious law argument. Kay's older half-brother learned what was happening during the first year and supported her financially while she was in school. He hated the parents far more than either of us did Kay feared them more, and I was just disgusted by them. It wasn't much of a fight. The parents represented themselves and tried to drop the case on religious grounds, which isn't a thing. 
After this, the revenge started, and Kay did not hold back. During proceedings, it was discovered that the parents had been using their children's social security cards for loans, credit, bank accounts, and other sketchy stuff. They were already going to jail for that, but Kay took it to the next level. Now, these were all the things Kay told me after the fact. I wasn't involved in this part, and I didn't write down all the details that well. But the following is approximately what happened from what I have been told or remembered. So, warning. Fuzzy details. One of the things that had been purchased in her name was the father's truck. Kay reported it as missing since she was technically the owner of the truck. They pulled the father over and confiscated the truck as stolen, because his name was not in the title, but the wife's was. When he tried to prove it was his by filling out the bill of sale on the back, he found that the title for the vehicle had been invalidated when Kay had ordered a new one and donated the vehicle to the fire department for Jaws of Life training. That same day, the mother's credit cards were the same, but Kay just cancelled all of them and declared ID theft. This froze some of the mother's bank accounts, which were under Kay's SSN. The family was already in chaos, but Kay cranked it to 11. Due to the SSN, Kay was listed as the main contact for the family's cell phone and internet plans. She cancelled both. She killed the email accounts in her name that she could access and rerouted her mail to her new PO box, where she may have accidentally forgotten to say they should only reroute her mail. She also called in repossessions on everything that had been bought with her SSN on credit. The loans included renovations on the home, so the parents were forced to sell. By the time Kay was done, the parents were happy to go to jail for fraud, identity theft, and their other numerous crimes rather than live on the street. All I do know is that they became social pariahs in town before that. Stores banned them for their increasingly violent attempts at converting people. People they knew for years turned on them. The father was fired for failing a performance review, and the mother lost her job selling stuff. Due to her increased radicalization, in the end, Kay's siblings went to live with her half-brother since he was the closest living relative. The parents lost all rights to visitation, as the state nullified their parental rights and gave guardianship to the half-brother, mostly due to the criminal charges. But the real revenge might just be that as the sentencing was carried out, Kay flipped the parents off in front of the judge, and the judge just laughed at the parents' attempts to claim it was hate speech, TLDR. Narcissistic and awful parents attempt to ruin a child's life for being lesbian. The child sends them to jail. Edit. So, this blew up. I read this and cried. These walking sewage monsters caused her so much pain for so long. It was hard for her to talk about it with anyone, even me. She saw a bunch of people calling her a badarse in the comments and broke down in tears. I never expected a Reddit post would be how we finally got her the support she needed. Edit 2. Holy SHT, guys and gals. So I didn't know this, but Kay never got psychiatric help after all that. She was too busy with school, her job, the multiple lawsuits and legal proceedings, the unraveling mess of what happened with her credit, and dealing with her younger siblings. She blames herself for all of it. She thought that if she were normal, none of this would have happened. We all know that's bullshit, but she was close to self-harm at a few points. So now she's in a crisis session at home, and she's talking about it for the first time in years. I'll be there towards the end of the day but I'll try to update this regularly. Edit 3. To address some common questions. Uh, we messed up with the truck. I didn't make the final call, but I definitely said something about destroying it. This was before the scope of the ID theft was revealed to us. So Kay, and I thought it would be funny. It stopped being funny once we realized how deep in the SHT she was. Her credit score is lower than some people's IQs, although maybe not her parents. She's been denied loans and vehicles even junkers because of that. The lawyer said it will probably take years to wipe the remains off her credit reports due to the sheer number of credit changes. The lawyer works for free since minors can't hire lawyers. He is paid by a not-for-profit that helps people escape situations like K's. That NFP is local to my area, so I'm not going to mention it for privacy's sake, but they are amazing. K is okay. Not good or bad, just okay. The crisis session is still happening, but I heard from K's GF that she's talking about it and reading the comments. Thank you all for your support. I'll be joining them soon-ish, and we'll update then. Edit 4. Holy SHT front page. Kay's lawyer has asked me to stop answering certain questions, because there are still active suits that need to be finalized. Kay's half-brother has asked me to take him out since he didn't contribute that much. As if. Bullshit, you did nothing dude. You bankrolled everything. None of this would have happened without you. You are the reason we are here now. You are more of a hero than I am. You are what I aspire to be. Update. TLDR. 
Parents kicked their daughter out because she was lesbian. She absolutely destroyed their lives. Update time. Thank you all for your epic words of encouragement and support. Kay had been feeling like this was all her fault, including, and I didn't know this at the time three separate lawsuits to grant custody of all three siblings Kay and the younger two to the older half-brother. Apparently, the courtroom was about as toxic as you can imagine. So Kay was near self-harming because of the stress of not only being forced to tear her family apart, sorting out the disastrous financial situation they left her in, and continuing with school since it was a legal requirement for her to live with her half-brother. I didn't know this, but she had a plan and a letter all prepared. Neither of us were expecting the massive amount of moral support that came in. You guys were the push she needed to speak up about it. You guys got her to talk to her half-brother and lawyer. I love these guys even more now. And they immediately brought her into crisis counseling. And she is doing so much better now. There were some other questions I also wanted to address from the other post. Go fund me. After a lot of consideration, they decided against it. Due to the active cases of the younger siblings, who are still minors, any information they give out about names, dates, or even locations can be used to track them down. And Kay would very much like her privacy. Kay has pretty much figured out the money thing by now, and her half-brother and I can supply her in emergencies. The parents. Endangering the welfare of a child. Resisting arrest. Insurance fraud. Destruction of private property. Destruction of public property. Vandalism. And a whole ton of others. I'm forgetting or getting it wrong. But you get the idea. What happened after they were charged was that they went around the street preaching, trying to gain support. In the end, they spray-painted slogans on people's houses, some statues, and a few vehicles. They then tried to claim vehicle insurance on their destroyed truck and ran from police when they were served warrants for the other two children. They apparently also verbally abused and threatened Kay with holy wrath or something like that in the classroom, in front of the judge. In short, Kay's lawyer expects them to spend a minimum of 10 years in jail. Technically, the charges from the identity theft they performed on their children haven't been tallied up. But apparently that's a different court system. I think that's a federal crime because of the IRS and taxes. I could be wrong. I'm not the lawyer. Kay's support network. I didn't know this at the time, but apparently a whole whacked in of local businesses and residents pitched in to help Kay get by on her own. One of the car dealerships even gave her a car, despite the fact that it failed a safety inspection with something like a 4 out of 100 I doubt it was that severe. But the point was that it was a junker that some of the good old boys from town fixed up for her. The NFP that Kay deals with also got a lot of donations. Somehow a whole bunch of you found it. So serious kudos for that. They reported on their awful website that they're expected to be hiring another lawyer to help with more cases. It makes me happy that Reddit made this possible, but it saddens me that it's necessary. Side note. Small, local NFPs like this always need good web design volunteers. So look at your local charity's website, cringe, and volunteer to help them with it. It's really hard to make it worse than it already is in most cases. What's next? As far as I know, Kay's finances, credit history, school life, job, and relationship status have all pretty much stabilized. Next year she hopes, she'll be starting college or trade school. Thank you all, seriously though. Kay might not be here right now without you all. So thank you so much. Second story. OP caught his girlfriend talking to someone secretly every day. So he accused her of cheating. And now she has ghosted him. And her brother started bullying him. Trying to ruin his life and make him miserable. My girlfriend 26F and I 32M have been dating for a few months. My work switched to full-time work recently, so I started staying over more, and things have been great, apart from one issue. When I used to stay over and get up early for work, my girlfriend would stay in bed until after I left. As soon as I started working from here, she became an instant early riser, always getting up maybe 20 minutes before me. When she asked me about it, she said she just likes quiet coffee in the mornings. I got up early a couple of times, made fresh coffee, and handed her a cup so we could enjoy it together. But wherever I sat, she would go and sit elsewhere. This has been really getting to me, so I pressed the point and said it would be nice to sit together in the mornings. It didn't go great, and when I tried to sit with her, the next day I am seeing red, even as I type this, she went into her office and locked the door behind her. She did this several days in a row last week, and when I try to bring it up, she says she doesn't want to talk about it. Yesterday was my day off. So I stayed in bed, waited till she got up for her quiet coffee, and I crept up to the office, and as I suspected, she's talking to someone. She was speaking very softly, so I couldn't make it out, but it sounded like an intimate conversation. I've barely spoken to her since and don't know what to say. How do you address this when she refuses to even speak about it? 
What is she getting from another relationship when I have been with her 247 for the last two weeks? I do have a small camera I could put in her office. I know it's wrong, but this is driving me crazy. And if I need to confront her, it will be easier with all the evidence. My girlfriend gets up every morning for a secret conversation and won't discuss it with me. And it's driving me crazy. OP gets a few replies telling him to hide the camera. These posts are later heavily downvoted. But at the time, they get little attention. Then two days later, Ada for wanting to know who my girlfriend was speaking to every morning. I noticed recently that my girlfriend was avoiding me in the mornings. Not only for a short period of time, but every single day. And insisting she just wanted a quiet coffee on her own. I happened to hear her talking to someone during one of these morning sessions. And I obviously wanted to know who she's talking to every single morning. Today, when she got up and went to make coffee, I took her mug and wouldn't let her have it. I was only joking at first, but it turned worse with her saying, just give me my mug, and I lost my temper and said, just tell me who you're effing cheating on me with. This is where I think I'm the arsehole. Maybe because it's something she's been doing every day since her dad died almost a year ago. She talks to him every morning while she drinks her coffee. She just chats about her day or whatever. Obviously, I backed off right away and sat down. I told her it's fine, and she should keep doing it. I want her to, and I just needed to know. I just thought she was talking to some other guy. She shook her head and said it was just a silly thing, and she couldn't keep doing it now that she had to talk about it. I don't know why knowing what she's doing makes a difference or why I would have avoided this whole thing. She seemed sad, but she was smiling, so I went into the bedroom. But just a minute later I heard her crying really, really hard. I went back, and she was saying he's gone now. He's really gone, so I said, are you talking about your dad? And she just got up and ran out the door. She has not answered my texts, and then about an hour ago, her brother came to the door and called me a effing arsehole, hole, and worse, I honestly thought he was going to hit me. He took some of her stuff and said she wouldn't be home tonight. I never meant to upset her, and it is not unreasonable to want to know who your partner is talking to every morning. I am sorry she got upset, but am I really in the wrong here? The post was removed before the verdict was rendered. But votes were heavily YTA of course. A week passes. I'm going to be homeless because my girlfriend won't talk to me on Monday. My girlfriend and I had an argument last week over coffee, of all things. It got out of hand, and she went to stay somewhere else to cool off. Now she is only speaking to me through her brother, who hates me anyway, so I don't have any chance to set things right. He is saying I need to move out in three days so she can come home, but I have nowhere to go and can't get a place of my own so fast. I know if I could talk to her, we could get past this, but everything is going through him, and I am sure he is twisting her words and mine to keep us apart. She has blocked me on everything, and her phone is here, so I can't call or text her. What can I do to get past her brother, who is trying to keep us apart? I need to set things straight, or I'm going to be homeless. Edit. She has taken some leave from her job, but her work phone and laptop are here, so I could possibly use her job to convince her to speak with me. This post is quickly linked back to the previous two, and OP tries to defend himself in the comments. On his living and working arrangements. No, the house belongs to her. Although I have a key and do live here full time. I don't drive and don't have much money right now. Also, I need internet access for my job. And I have been using a laptop that isn't mine. I need to talk to her, or I'm finished. I know we can sort this out. But her brother is deliberately preventing it. I haven't got anywhere else to go. I am not using the homeless lightly. I have not been contributing so far as I am trying to deal with the lease on my old place. But I was planning to very shortly. My girlfriend owns the house outright so I wasn't shorting her by not contributing to rent or anything, on his old apartment. We have been together for a few months, and I have been living here for a few weeks due to a problem with the lease at my old place. One of the problems her brother has with me, is that his friend's dad owns my old building, so it's obviously nothing to do with me and his sister. He's just being a DCK. I don't have a lot of stuff, probably a suitcase of clothes and a few other items. I've not been able to collect my stuff from my old apartment. My big problem is having no access to a computer, as I can't do my job without that. And I have been using a laptop here. I only have about $400 right now, and another $70 in cash. I had a dispute with the landlord, and he won't let me collect my belongings. You would get along well with him, as you are both so determined to take the worst possible view of everything. Are you just making up your own story here? I fell out with the landlord, so I moved out, which is a totally normal thing to do. This is completely unrelated and I have given her brother no reason to have a problem with me ever. I broke the lease on my apartment, so I can't go back there. 
It is very hard to get anywhere here without a reference, and I doubt I have enough for a deposit. Most of my money is tied up in various deals right now, and I would take a big loss if I tried to pull it back. On using her work phone or laptop to force her to talk to him, they are in her office. Her personal phone is in there too, although I think she has her tablet. I told her brother to take her phone, and he said no, she'd get it when she's home. Edit. What he actually said was to F off and stay out of his effing way. I have no idea why I am trying to hide the kind of person he actually is. He has no reason to act this way toward me. Just tell her, they need to speak with her or something. I was genuinely looking for advice, and hoping someone would suggest something. I'm not a bad guy. On his current predicament and problems with her brother. Her brother has threatened to literally drag me out, if I am not gone by Wednesday. I am pretty sure that if I leave, I will not be able to get back in. I walked to the store yesterday, and on my way back, I saw her brother drive past, so I cut across to get back before him, but I know someone on the street is telling him when I leave. He did not stop. He just drove past. He saw me in the window and didn't stop. The problem is that once I am out, I would find it very hard to prove I live there. So if he does physically get me out, he could tell the cops I'm just some crazy guy, and the neighbors would stick up for him. It would not surprise me if he had already agreed to this with the neighbor, and that's who told him when I went out. I am genuinely looking for advice on how to get around her SHT head brother and make her listen to me. This is not a big argument, and we can settle it easily. I just need to talk to her. What am I meant to do? Just go OF, her brother says it over. I'll just pack my SHD and go live in a park. You don't know anything about this, and you'd buy him a drink for bullying me into being homeless. I think that says a lot about you. It was just a stupid thing. My girlfriend is upset about some other stuff and she is mixing it all up into this one thing. If she just cooled off and let me talk to her, we could get over this in five minutes, but he spent three days whispering poison into her ears. My absolute favorite comment, the plaintiff, how is this advice, is beautiful. Her brother is bullying though. Standing between two adults, using his physical size to stop them from talking to each other. He is the one who has used abusive language. He is the one who has threatened violence. He is the one who is threatening to make someone homeless. If I posted this from the other side, I am a landlord and I am using my brother to make someone homeless in three days and refusing to let them speak. You guys would be all over it. How is this advice? And then finally, OP cannot help, but return to one of the original replies about planting a camera, saying he wishes he'd just done that instead. Just FYI, if I had followed your advice, this would have been settled quickly and quietly, with no harm done. I listen to people saying SHT like, use your words. And now I wish I'd just listened to you. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.